And all you can do while you wear it is to tell it. Try to clarify the atmosphere and scrape off the barnacles from this ship that gather them over the centuries. Far from belittling Jesus, I have placed him where he actually is. He is God. He is not the Son of God. He is God. He is the Lord. A symbol of God, if you may say. Because he wasn't born of any woman. <laughs> the only woman of whom he was born, I am. That's the Jerusalem from above. I am Mary. And birth to Christ must give. If I in blessedness for now, and evermore would live. So each must bring forth the Son. And it's the same Son, only one Son. And when you look at him, no uncertainty, no one need tell you anything. Turns and you know who you are, you're God the Father. It's going to happen to every child born of woman. Not one will be lost, not one. And one day it will awake. And when it awakes, it comes out of the tomb. So Paul could say, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, not I. Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And that Son is David. Listen to the words. I have found in David the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. Well, the word Jesse means Jehovah exists. That's what the word means. So Jesse is the father. What? Who father? David's father. And who is Jesse? Jehovah. And who is Jesus? Jehovah. He is the Lord, but no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And who is the Holy Spirit? The Remembrancer. When the Son stands before you and memory returns and you are his Father and he is your Son, then only by this return of memory will you ever know. And so, no one can say that Jesus is Lord and Jesus is the Father. For in spirit, David called him my Lord. Why did he call him my Lord? Well, that's the title of Father. So he called Jesus my Lord. He is the I am in you. The I am in every being in this world. So we will go up to Jerusalem. And all that was actually written about the Son of Man which is the title that he used of self, will now be accomplished. So I'm going up to Jerusalem because everything is going to happen in the skull. That's where Jerusalem is. The Jerusalem above. I'm going up to Jerusalem, not down. And all things said of the Son of Man will now be accomplished. So he goes up and the whole thing unfolds within the skull. And when it all settles, here stands David before you. He was buried in you. So when he said to me, I laid myself down within you to sleep. Who said that? The depth of my own soul. The Lord said that. I laid myself down within you to sleep. And as I slept, I dreamed a dream. I dreamed and I knew exactly what he was dreaming. He's dreaming that he's I. And when the dream is over, we aren't two. We are one. No longer will he simply treat me as something on the outside, an emanation of his. No more the emanation. He cleaves to me and we become one being. So a man leaves his wor world, his father, his mother, everyone, and cleaves to his wife. And this is the wife, the emanation of God. Yet, Though his emanation, it's his wife until the dream is over. When the sleep is over, we aren't two, we are one. Man's own wonderful human imagination, that is Jesus. That's God. And sort of blame 
a race of people for doing what no one ever did. Listen to the Bible. The 10th chapter. No one takes away my life. I lay down myself. I have the power to lay it down and the power to take it up again. For I am the resurrection and the life. So he entered death's door, the human skull, and laid down in the grave of man. And there he dreams the dream of life. And this is the dream of life. And one day, he comes to the end. And he awakes where? In the tomb where he entered. To find himself there. It was a long dream. Thousands and thousands of years he's been dreaming this dream. You didn't begin in your mother's womb. Seventy years ago, or whatever year you may be. That's only a garment woven for you. You are eternal. You have no beginning and you have no end. Never was there a time when you were not. Nor shall there ever come a time when you shall cease to be. Beginning and ends are all dreams. It seems so real, but they're all dreams. But you have no beginning. No end. You are. And that being is called in scripture, God the Father. But may I tell you something? You will not actually feel, I am Jesus. I am Father. That's what you feel. You don't feel Jesus. You don't feel God. You don't feel Jehovah. These are names given by man. But what you do feel is Father. So the great revelation of the New Testament is God is Father. That is the foundation of the entire thing. If you were not a father, then there is no child. So the relationship of father-son is fundamental to the Christian faith. Without the son, there would not be a father. And if there is a father, there must be a son. And it's the search for the son. And when the son is found, the father knows who he is but not until the Son is resurrected. So, in the Old Testament, in the 2nd Psalm, the 16th Psalm, and the 110th Psalm, they're identified with resurrection. In the 16th Psalm, David is speaking, and he's made to say, Thou wouldst not leave my soul in hell. In confidence, he knows he would not be left in hell, that he would be raised up, because I will not take my steadfast, sure love from David. That's my covenant with the peoples. I have made him a witness to all the peoples. I will not take my love from him. So he dies, and he is buried, but I will raise him up. And when the father raises up the son, then the smile is on his face, because his son has returned from the grave. And David is the eternal son of God. The resultant state of all the experiences that you as a man, which is God as man, experience in this world. So God became as I am, that I may be as he is. This is the story of scripture. And it's all in the Old Testament, but not understood. There it is, a blueprint. It's an adumbration. The new interprets the old, not the other way around. And when it happens in you, well, what a joy. I can't tell anyone the emotion that possesses you, and then you really are like one possessed. You walk in the dream of what happened, and you cannot think of anything but, really. You may be diverted for a little while. A small party, a big one would bore you. A few friends, yes. A large crowd, no. It doesn't interest you. A dinner party of a few chosen friends, yes. But to have an enormous crowd, no, that's nothing more than noise. Everyone's trying to, well, monopolize the entire picture. But a few chosen friends for a party, a delightful evening with words, where you're discussing reality, wonderful. But after it happens to you, may I tell you, you can't think of anything but, and your dreams are not dreams anymore.
Your nights are not what they were prior to that waking. You wake and it's entirely different. And I can't explain to anyone who wakes every day of their life after a night of good sleep that that waking in the morning doesn't compare to this. It's something entirely different. 